Hey, what's up guys? This is Cody the Coin Raptor and welcome to my channel. I'm here to bring you the best crypto information that I can. All right, including chart TA news and on-chain analytics. So, just like usual, we're going to start with Bitcoin. All right, Bitcoin from yesterday is massively down from yesterday, right? It's massively down. Right now, it's actually testing support here at about, uh, what's that, 20,160 20, in that range right here. You can see I literally just put out this support level, which has been tested back in the 23rd. It bounced off this level and then actually even further than that, the 23rd. Uh, earlier as well so you have two points of support here so the rule of thumb when it comes to support is the more times it tests support the weaker the support gets I liken it to um, throwing rocks at a glass panel you know eventually if you hit if you throw enough rocks at it it's gonna break so we have here three tests of the support I personally don't think the support's going to last. We already called out the double top here. One, two, this double top, and that's a bearish formation. What we're going to probably wind up seeing is Bitcoin is going to retest, retrace all the way back down here, past the, uh, past 20,000, under 20,000, and may actually come down here and retest 17,500, which is where it was before. So 20,000 is going to be a huge level of psychological support. And I expect there are going to be buyers waiting in the wings here. Uh, we can actually zoom out a little bit. Let me show you the our, our profile, our volume profile here. All right, so let's look at Bitcoin's volume profile. And the volume profile is going to give you the historical volume based on the price. And so what we've seen here so far is that most of Bitcoin's historical volume has come under about 12,000 or so. Now, I don't know if we're going to reach that point uh, I've outlined a point that I think is probably the maximum loss here at about 11,000. So we could potentially be in that range. But historically, most of the volume is going to be coming under that, that 12,000 range. We also have volume here at about 20,000 or so from 20 to uh, about 17 and a half. So below 17 and a half thousand, there's barely any historical volume whatsoever. So if we, if we get under that 17 level, then we are going to fall even further. All right. So I'll be watching this and seeing, uh, how this plays out. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Ethereum next. All right. Ethereum also in a very similar state. Okay, with Ethereum, we'll look at the volume profile for Ethereum here on the weekly, and we can see that based on the weekly, uh, we have most of the volume at about uh, about f just 470, 480 in that range. So it is entirely possible. Again, this corresponds with that maximum pain level that I put down here at 450. So that's, that's entirely possible that we could see that level, and that's where the volume would step in. However, I would caution by saying that most people are going to be looking at this level um, as, as previous um, points where both Ethereum and Bitcoin have fallen to, and uh, they may jump ahead, and you it may not actually ever reach this number. It'll probably bounce at 550 or something like that, 550, 500 or so. Because other people are going to be looking at this level and they're going to say, okay, this is maximum support here. We have historical volume at about 479 and they'll jump the gun. So I don't really think that, um, that we're going to hit that point exactly. But with Ethereum, Ethereum has been looking incredibly weak. I'm going to zoom in here. Ethereum is looking incredibly weak. I drew out the local support here at approximately uh, 1131. So 1,131, I expect that it's probably going to bounce off of this, and then it'll probably crash through, especially if we have a really bad day on the NASDAQ tomorrow. Today we had a bad day, and we fell dramatically. And I don't see that changing because the market right now in the short term is very bearish. All right, so let's zoom out here. Let's look at the macro picture. Something I posted earlier is four bullish events for Bitcoin, right? And because all the other cryptocurrencies follow Bitcoin, this is four bullish events for all of the crypto market, right? First, you have the Bitcoin halving. The halving is oftentimes the start of a new bull market. We've seen that in the cycles where where Bitcoin, uh, the halving basically just means that the rewards, the block rewards for Bitcoin gets cut in half. So it affects supply, supply decreases and demand increases because supply decreases. All right. 
Number two, Bitcoin spot ETF is approved in the U.S. This is incredibly important because what we saw last year for the, the top of the bull market last year is that it was right when the SEC approved the futures for Bitcoin, the futures ETF for Bitcoin. So I expect that an actual spot Bitcoin, which means that the, the ETF has to actually go and buy Bitcoin to support uh, people who buy the ETF, I would expect that this would have a huge increase on the demand for Bitcoin. Next, the Fed stops raising interest rates, right? They stop this rate hikes. Now, that's also pretty big because we've talked many times here about the dollar index and the dollar index increases, right? The strength of the dollar increases as the Fed increases interest rates. It makes the dollar uh, more expensive, especially to borrow. So if the Fed stops raising interest rates, not only will the stock market go up and Bitcoin will follow because it's correlated heavily to the NASDAQ, but the dollar index will go down or stay the same, which is bullish for Bitcoin. And then finally, we have the Ukrainian war will come to an end. So that's also very bullish for Bitcoin. If you go back and we'll, we'll take a look here and you take a look at the, let's see, the point where the war started. We'll go back to February here. I'll show you what I mean. So back in February, when this war started, uh, the Ukrainian war started, you can see this is the candle. Wait, that's May. Sorry. Let me, I'm looking for February. Um, one sec here. All right. So this is the candle right here. You can see February 24th. This right here is when the Ukrainian war started and Bitcoin reacted extremely negatively. It was bought up, massive volume day, and it picked back up again. So I expect that when the Ukrainian war finally comes to an end, I expect that's going to be a bullish event for Bitcoin. It's going to be a bullish event for stocks, and it will go up from that point. Okay. Now, the important thing about this is that I expect all these to happen within the next two years. So I could be wrong about that. Again, I'm looking at my crystal ball and saying, well, okay, how often, how, how likely are these events from happening? And I, I think that they're all likely within the next two years or so. So zoom out, right? Note that there are a few bullish events coming up for Bitcoin. It might just take a couple of years to get there, which is fine. If, it's fine for me because I'm a long-term investor. But again, this is not financial advice. All right. Next, we're going to cover some news. First, Nexo says it's nothing like Celsius and the other crypto lenders. All right. So Nexo is one of the other C5 protocols, the centralized finance protocols that promises high interest rates for their crypto accounts. So you deposit crypto, you get a high interest rate, basically like an earn feature. And basically Nexo saying, hey, we're not insolvent. We're not in the same position as Celsius, which is uh, speculated to be insolvent and facing a serious um, potential crisis and even bankruptcy at this point. And so Nexo is coming out here and saying they've been receiving a lot of criticism from this Twitter account, especially uh, that says that they'll undergo a liquidity crisis by the end of 2022. Um, now, I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. I have no idea. But right now, Nexo is saying that they're perfectly solvent. So we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, next, we're going to cover uh, Bank of America, right? So Bank of America said that this crypto winner uh, has not frozen investor interest. So basically what they're saying is that uh, Bank of America has come out and they've, they've put in this report. And this report pointed out that many institutions and clients that they've talked to are still interested in Bitcoin. So Client engagement continues to grow and focus remains on the rapid deployment and disruptive nature of blockchain technology despite falling token prices and headlines suggesting the ecosystem's demise has arrived. Okay, so Bank of America, one of the largest banks in the U.S., is saying that their clients are still interested in crypto, in blockchain technology, in Bitcoin, and I tend to agree with them. I'm still very much interested in them. And I think that many people that I've talked to uh, that are that are bullish in the crypto market aren't going to be scared away by this bear market. But there's always going to be some volatility. There's probably going to be some losses coming up here. I expect that we're going to have more red days in the future. But that being said, long term, I am still very bullish. All right. 
That's all I've got for you. This is Cody the Coin Raptor. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and share. I would really appreciate it. Give me a follow on Twitter and let me know what you like to see, what you liked, what you didn't like, things I can cover. I would really appreciate that. Have a nice day.